Yeah, boss of YouTube, Six Foot Hacks here. Half for you guys today, the official first team building video of GBA D League. So, of course, if you guys are excited for the Durham Dreadagons to be in the D League, make sure to hammer arm that like button down below. Also, let me know in the comment section below what you think about our matchup, what you think about our team, and what do you think that maybe we could have prepared for a little bit better. Now, for those of you who may not know, we are taking on one of probably the best uh, team preppers and uh, all around just a really good battler in general and that is Jolt from the Token Minority is a kind of pillar in the Draft League community. In my opinion, Jolt is probably the best player and a team prepper out of all the coaches in the D League. So, of course, bad luck Leo struck and uh, we have a trial by fire week one going in to the D League. Now, I am not looking to lose, so I will be trying my best to hopefully pull out a W and before I jump into the actual team uh, preview talking. I want to give a huge shout out to the front office homies. Uh, we have Shuckle King 87, T Train, uh, K to the Two, and Polly Mac. And the recent addition, uh, Harris, is awesome. So yeah, huge shouts out to them for helping me prep for our Week One at GBA game. And oh, I'm not gonna lie, guys. I'm super, just so so nervous going into this battle. Honestly, man. Like, it would be my luck that I would get Jolt week one, who I'm sure will make playoffs. So, there is a chance that we will be seeing him again in the playoffs. So, got to keep that in mind when going into this battle. So, with that being said, let's go ahead, get this started. So, below me, you guys can see the uh, the matchup. Top two rows are my draft. The bottom two rows under the verses is my opponent's draft, aka Jolt's draft. Now, for those of you who may not know, the way I have recently started doing my team building videos was that under the verses, the top six Pokemon are the main six Pokemon I'm expecting my opponent to want to bring and then from your left to right my right to left are in the order that I expect the other five Pokemon to be brought so for example I really don't think he's gonna bring Deontay, Gorgeist or Rotom uh, Heat in this matchup just because uh, his the first eight Pokemon all just have such a really really good matchup going into this battle by far better than his final three months so those three are the ones that I mainly expect for him to not bring. Now, Seismitoad is kind of a toss-up on whether or not he could bring because in my mocks, my opponents brought Seismitoad, but then they left a another threat. So the main five Pokemon I honestly think he's going to bring are Mew, Tornadus, Zoroark, Scolipede, and Nidoqueen. All five of those mons, I believe, just have a phenomenal, phenomenal matchup in this battle. So... Those are the main five I'm expecting. Then the sixth is kind of a toss-up between either Mega Kangaskhan, Seismitoad, or even potentially the Kabalion. I feel like Kabalion and uh, Mega Kangaskhan aren't both going to be brought, uh, just because they both are dealt with by my Don fan accordingly. So I'm pretty sure he's going to bring one of the two, or if he does bring both, then I would much rather see both of those than like a Tornadus or a Zoroark or even Nidoqueen, honestly. Or if for some reason he doesn't bring Scolipede, that's going to be absolutely amazing. Amazing because Scolipede is actually very terrifying in this matchup. But again, the top six are what I'm mainly expecting. If not the Mega King's Con, then potentially the Seismitoad or the Cabalion could be thrown in there. So let's go ahead and jump into the first team member that we will be bringing this week. That is going to be Eddie the Greninja. Rest in peace, Eddie Guerrero. For those of you who may not know, I will be nicknaming all my Pokemon after wrestlers. Shouts out to the Bullet Punch Club on that one. It's just too sweet, baby. But yeah, this was originally going to be a substitute spike set of Greninja but after doing some mocks I realized that having Water Shuriken to potentially pick off the the Scolopee was going to be really really handy judging from if I do two or three hits I can do about 25 to about 45 percent if I get two hits I do I think like 25 ish 30 ish percent if I get three hits I do about 33 to 45 percent so that's going to come in really clutch if I'm able to get uh, two turns of rocks damage on the Scolipede going into this battle, which rocks are going to be absolutely important in this game. So hopefully I will be able to get those up and make sure that they do stay up throughout this battle. And Dark Pulse plus Water... not Water. 
Dark Pulse plus Hydro Pump with the Wise Glasses is able to just about 2 KO the entire draft of the Toronto Star Raptors. Uh, the only thing that is not 2 KO'd is, I believe, the Seismitoad, which could definitely be coming this game. A potential Spadef set is what I've mainly ran into in my mock, so definitely have to watch out for that because Dark Pulse only does about like 30-ish percent to that. Uh, there is always a chance we can flinch it, but there's also the chance that we don't flinch and he'll probably have like Focus Blast or Low Kick or something along those lines. Uh, spikes are also going to be really really crucial in this game uh, mainly because it will allow me to differentiate between Zoroark and Tornadus Therian if he does want to bring the two so obviously if he brings in Tornadus and it takes Spikes damage then oh hey that's a Zoroark so then I can go from there. Uh, spikes in general also are going to be really good with Stealth Rocks to just apply a lot of pressure on him because if I'm able to hazard stack him I can hopefully keep up offensive momentum and offensive pressure to be able to uh, pull out the victory and not, any, and not let anything potentially set up or get behind a substitute or something along those lines so yeah I definitely feel Greninja is going to be very very important in this game so I have to make sure to not play it uh, really bad and make sure I can play it accordingly and um if we get knocked into torrent range, then that's going to be even better for us because that means Water Shuriken is going to be doing way more damage to the Scolipede, which could definitely come in handy as well. So, moving on down the line. Oh, actually, yeah, uh, the speed EVs are to outspeed Timid Max Speed Tornadus if he for some reason wants to run Max Speed. Plus, dropping my speed from 191 to like 182 to outspeed a speed creeping Tornadus doesn't really add any kind of bulk to uh, Greninja here, so it really wouldn't have mattered. So, moving on down the line we have Zazaro aka the Mega Aerodactyl for those of you who have been following my P4G run. You guys are very familiar with Cesaro. A well-trained Mega Aerodactyl, ladies and gentlemen, can be absolutely deadly. So, going into this game, uh, bulky Mega Aerodactyl is actually really, really solid. It deals with uh, mainly the Tornadus, and it can also taunt and, in theory, beat the Mew 1v1, as long as it's not a setup variant of Mew, which you could very well bring a Defog set, potentially. Although, I could also be... Um, I could also expect them to bring a bulk up or like calm mind, maybe nasty plot set or something along those lines. So that is going to be a little bit scary if I run into that. Earthquake is mainly here just for the Cabalion and the Needle Queen. If he didn't have the Cabalion, I probably would be running Aqua Tail as opposed to Earthquake. Although Earthquake does also hit the Seismitoad, which I think takes about 20, 30 ish percent on uh, especially defensive Seismitoad and there's a good chance he's going to be running Rindoberry to uh, weaken a potential Grass Knot or Hidden Power Grass from anything on my team. Also a Seed Bomb or Energy Ball from Don Fan and Reuniclus if I brought them. So yeah, very positive he's going to bring Rindoberry Toad so really have to watch out for that. But between Stone Edge and Earthquake with an Adamant Nature and having 92 attack EVs, this Mega Aerodactyl after Rocks is able to just about 2 a KO absolutely everything and anything that the Toronto Star Rappers want to bring except uh, for the Toad obviously. And then if I'm able to Earthquake the Cabalion or Nidoqueen on a switch in, I should be able to 2 KO those with Earthquake as well. So that's going to be really good. Taunt is mainly to just stop Mew from roosting. If I'm feeling aggressive, I can also stop the Toad from potentially getting up rocks. Or if for some reason he brings Toxic Spikes on his Nidoqueen, I can stop that as well. Though really don't expect him to bring T-Spikes because he should have rocks on the Nidoqueen. Unless he wants to put rocks on Mew with Defog as well. In which case Mew should be a little bit easier for my team to deal with. So depending on what sets they are running will determine on how I can play around them. The max HP and the fancy Vs allow us to pseudo check Adamant Max Attack Kangaskhan, although very positive he's not going to be bringing Adamant Max Attack Mega Kangaskhan, that's just absolutely worst case scenario. This can actually 2 KO Mega Kangaskhan depending on the EV spread that he is running after hazards, it's definitely 2 KO and if he is running like Wish uh, or something along those lines, I can obviously taunt the Wish and then stop him from recovering back HP, so that's going to be really good. As long as I don't get really unlucky with missing Stone Edges, I definitely see Mega Aerodactyl putting in a lot of work between Mega Aerodactyl and and uh, Greninja, we can definitely pressure his uh, potential six that he wants to bring very, very well. So really happy between these two uh, offensive mods. And again, 92 attack EVs with the Natum and Nature are more than enough to be able to pressure his team, I think, while still being able to have a decent bit of bulk. And then the speed allows us to outspeed a speed creeping Tornadus, which should only be reaching about 181 speed. 
uh, because that's enough to outspeed uh, Raichu, which is, I think, our second fastest Mon on the team. So, yeah, he would definitely want to outspeed that, and he can already outspeed Tornadus. And because Jolt is a very great prepper, I know he's not going to want to let any EVs go to waste. So, moving on down the line, we have Spadef. Calm Mind Reuniclus. Now, this may seem a little bit odd. This Reuniclus is really here to fulfill a couple roles. Uh, it's mainly here to stop Needle Queen because if you look at the matchup, Modest Life Orb Shadow Ball Needle Queen, I feel just really, really has a good offensive matchup going into this battle. Like, there's really no reason for him to run, uh, to not run Shadow Ball essentially because it hits my. Bronzong and it hits my Reuniclus both for super effective damage and he's gonna have Sludge Wave as his main primary stab and then he's gonna have Stealth Rocks and then this final move could either be uh, Ice Beam, Thunderbolt, maybe uh, Focus Blast potentially or Earth Power if he just wants to have something to guarantee to knock out the Salazzle which I could possibly bring so in that sense if he doesn't have Shadow Ball and Needle Queen then this will always 110% be a good safe switch in. The other benefit of Reuniclus is that if I'm able to get up to plus one in my Spadef and Special Attack, there's no way Life Orb, especially Offensive Zoroark, will be able to 2 a Kiyomi. And if he's got a Z move, I can even live the Z move uh, and then go for the recover and then from there I'll be taking less damage from Dark Pulse anyways, which will allow me to recover and potentially a uh, calm mind boost up so if I'm able to get rid of the Scolipede and the Mega Kangaskhan then Reuniclus can definitely put in a lot of work late game this is essentially kind of my uh, win condition to an extent I don't want to try and reveal calm mind too early on in the battle this can also uh, beat Mew potentially 1v1 depending on what set he's going to be running. Uh, the defensive EVs are just really there so I can take physical hits just a little bit better. Uh, max HP to 228 uh, HP EVs doesn't really change any damage rolls either so I can definitely see Reuniclus putting in a lot of work in this, uh, in this matchup which... I'm hoping we'll be able to sweep late game depending on how things go. If I'm able to get on my hatches, then we should be in a good scenario. As our fourth member, we have Umaga here. Rest in peace, Umaga. We have Umaga the Dawn fan, and this is a very physically defensive set, mainly to be able to check the Mega Kangaskhan because, if I'm not mistaken, it's going to be taking about 16% damage every single time it goes for a physical move. So that's going to be a huge, huge plus for me going into this matchup. Stealth Rocks are going to be absolutely important in this game his only form of hazard removal is defog Mew which if he doesn't have defog Mew then me getting up stealth rocks is gonna be nice to apply pressure also get off very needed chip damage on his tornadus so it doesn't gain back as much HP from regenerator it's also gonna be nice to different to differentiate uh, Zoroark from like Balion or Seismitoad or Nidoqueen because with them resisting rocks, they're obviously going to be taking less damage from stealth rocks, while Zoroark will always be taking 12%, so that can also really come in handy. And this, with rocks, can also turn certain 3-hit uh, KOs into 2-hit KOs and 2-hit KOs into potential Okos, and then rocks plus spikes again are going to be really nice to just pressure his team. Earthquake, mainly there for stab, rapid spin, obviously, so we can uh, potentially spin away any rocks that he sets up on our side of the field, or if for some reason he does bring uh, Spike's Scolipede, that could be a little bit annoying as well, so this will be really nice to hopefully rapid spin on something. And then Ice Shard was originally going to be knockoff, but in my mock battles, I really didn't see or I didn't really find any chance to actually use knockoff and I was in the scenario of where I really wish that I had Ice Shard, uh, Ice Shard to get off a little bit more chip damage on Scolope. The combination of Ice Shard plus three Water Shuriken hits does about 53% to Scolipede. So if I'm able to get two Stealth Rocks switch-ins on Scolipede, it'll be in range of where I shot a plus three hits from Water Shuriken can knock it out. If he's Life Orb, then after Life Orb, two hits from Water Shuriken and I shard should be enough to finish off the Scolipede. So it's going to be really good. I'm going to try and save I shard and kind of play as if I don't have it. So hopefully that will uh, catch him off guard in certain scenarios. The Spadefi Bs are just really there because the 20 extra attack EVs really wouldn't have mattered although I may just double check my calcs and if it really comes down to it I could add them into attack but if I remember correctly they really don't matter too much and then 
252 down to 204 EVs in defense also doesn't really change any important damage rolls because I'm always going to be 3 KO'd by the Mega Kangaskhan if it's adamant max attack, which again, highly doubt, but you just never know. You always got to prepare for worst case scenario. And then this can also just completely chew any hits from Kabalion and potentially beat it 1v1 because he is not a Z move Kabalion. And moving on to our fifth member, we have Braun, the monster among mons, Kiram Black, Big Black Kiram. Man, I'm actually so excited to be using Kiram Black, man. This thing is an absolute monster. This can definitely um, chew a lot of hits. Also, with only 40 special attack EVs, it still is going to be doing about... 50-ish percent to just about everything that the Toronto Star Raptors could potentially bring. The combination of Focus Blast plus Ice Beam hits the entire draft of the Toronto Star Raptors for neutral or super effective damage. I originally did have Draco over Hidden Power Grass, but the main drawback of Draco Meteor is that it could potentially give uh, Kabalion a chance to like Rock Polish, it could let Mega Kangaskhan potentially substitute, it could also let Mew set up as well, so that's something I really wanted to try and avoid. Also by having Hidden Power Grass, I can pop a Rindo Berry on the, on the Seismitoad and then a Rindo Berried HP Grass and a regular HP Grass does about 65-ish, 70-ish percent to max Spadaf, max HP Seismitoad, so that's going to be really good. Roost obviously is just there to be able to recover back HP. Unless I get really unlucky and I miss Focus Blast in this battle, then I don't see Kiram doing entirely too much, but this can also be just a really good pivot into the Tornadus, into the Nidoqueen. We always outspeed Modest Max Speed Nidoqueen. I don't think he's going to want to bring Timid just because Modest with a bit of speed and a bit of bulk seems to be uh, the better set he could run in this matchup in my opinion. And then if it's Timid Nidoqueen, then that just means Reuniclus is going to be taking less damage on the switch-in, so that's just going to be better for me. And then... Uh, this unfortunately is kind of hard walled by the Mew, but uh, between hazards and potentially being able to taunt it and stop it from setting up and wearing it down with Reuniclus's signal beam, we should be able to apply pressure if we do have hazards up as well, depending on how much Spadef he's running and on how much HP he'll be at. He can't safely switch in to two ice beams either, so that's going to be really, really good. This also does outspeed a uh, potential speed creeping Mew, which if he is running defensive Mew, I think he wouldn't be running uh, too many speed EVs. At least not enough to reach 130 in my opinion. So we can outspeed him and then potentially 2 a KO him depending on how things go. And then our last team member is going to be the GOAT. Jericho aka Silvali Steel this time. Silvali Steel actually has a really really good matchup in this game I believe. Because if you look at our draft there's really no reason at all for Scolipede to be running Earthquake or for Kangaskhan to be running Earthquake. Uh, they can definitely fit a different coverage move on there. Like Scolipede, I'm 99% sure is going to be Aqua Tail, Mega Horn, Poison Jab, Protect. If not Protect, then Spikes. But there's no way he's bringing four attacks Scolipede because he needs that Protect in order for it to outspeed my Mega Aerodactyl and my Greninja. And then Kangaskhan could run uh, Fake Out, Return, uh, potentially power up punch that could actually be a little bit annoying if he does run power up punch he could also have wish uh, sucker punch crunch even if he wants to go down that route uh, ice punch maybe i ran into an ice beam mega kangaskhan so that's actually uh, something i'll really have to be careful with but the evs on this silvali is to ensure that i'm not too ko'd by any non-earthquake move coming from the Scolipede. So even Adamant Life Orb Scolipede only does about 30-ish percent to this EV spread. If I really wanted to, I could probably add some more defense EVs just to kind of lower the percentage. And I'll probably be double checking on my calcs anyways. So yeah, the four special attack EVs really don't even accomplish anything. They're just kind of there because I didn't have anywhere to put them. 92 Spadef EVs just to take a potential non-boosted heat wave from Tornadus or just to be able to take a flamethrower from life-formed uh, Zorark. And then the speed EVs are enough to outspeed a potential speed creeping Nidoqueen if he is not reaching up to 120 speed. And then if he's not running any speed at all on his Mew, we should outspeed it by two points. So 
that could also come in really, really handy as well. And then if he is for some reason reaching over 121 speed on Needle Queen, which again, I really don't think he's going to be running that much speed, then we can also outspeed it. Uh, Flamethrower does come in handy just to be able to get off some nice little chip damage. We are able to do about 60 to 70-ish percent to the Scolope, which is really nice. Toxic is literally uh, only for the Mew, honestly. If he's not running Taunt Mew, as soon as I Toxic it, dealing with that thing is going to be 10 times easier for my team because now I'll be able to consistently get residual damage on it every time it switches in and then if I'm able to get up hazards and keep up hazards and just apply offensive pressure then Mew shouldn't even be that big of an issue either so that's kind of the idea behind the set and then rest talk is so I can keep this as healthy as possible although it does kind of suck not having parting shot for that little bit of momentum it's just I would much rather have Silvali be a defensive check to the likes of Scolipede and a Kangaskhan if it really comes down to it. Also a physical Zoroark if for some reason he wants to bring that. So yeah guys, that is going to be our week one team. I am kind of confident in this team, kind of worried just mainly because of the matchup and knowing how great of a prepper Jolt is. And he is also a very solid player. So I really think this match is going to come down to who prep better and who can outplay who better. So yeah, hopefully we don't lose our first ever week one league game. And I'm not looking to lose. But if it is an L against Jolt, then best believe I will be looking for some revenge in playoffs if we do face him again. So definitely check out Jolt, guys. Check out the GBA and everybody's channel link and stuff. Should be down in the description as well. Make sure to hammer arm that like button down below. Let me know what you thought about our squad, what you think about our matchup. Do you think we're going to lose, win, or potentially draw? Who knows? You can let me know, though. So with all that being said, guys... I'll see you all tomorrow with the actual week one battle. So, later, everybody. Cause my brain and heart are both tied in the knot, and this hinders me from flying a lot. This causing me to show no emotion. But when I said I cared, I wasn't joking. But I guess it's too late for me to become broken. For now, I'm living with no more pain, tears, or hoping. I'm just coasting. Yeah, I said I'm coasting. No more pain, tears, and hoping. For real.